hey everybody and welcome back well today we've got an interesting thing coming from the Guardian right, which I don't usually listen to anything really the Guardian says since it's such a left-leaning publication right but anyway um, it has got quite a a point in that I think is quite valid because there's been some interesting things going on with Brexit recently hasn't there Yes, there has. Right, so let's just dive into this and we'll talk about it as we're going through. Most voters think risk of violence against MPs is a price worth paying over Brexit. That's quite a strong title, isn't it? It's quite a harsh title. Um, right, well, this is by Amy Walker, and this actually came out on Thursday. But this is just me now getting around to actually doing talking about it a bit. The research finds majority of both Leave and Remain voters feel violence acceptable to get outcome they support. See, I am not a fan of violence. I am not at all in any way, shape or form, a fan of the violence. Um, I believe it should be a last resort for any confrontation. But uh, let's just keep going through it and we'll talk some more and some of my reasonings why this could end up being a repeat of a very horrible event that, took, that almost took place a while back, but anyway. A majority of voters in England and Wales, England, Wales and Scotland believe the possibility of some level of violence against MPs is a price worth paying in order to get their way on Brexit, an academic survey has found. The poll from Cardiff University and the University of Edinburgh asked respondents what they would be prepared to see happen in order to leave or remain within the European Union. This included a question on whether achieving their desired political outcome was worth the risk of violence being directed against MPs. Most Leave voters who took part in the Future, Eng future of England study thought such, po thought such a possibility was a price worth paying for Brexit to be delivered and a 71% in England, 60% in Scotland, and 70% in Wales. Well, that is quite high. Now, 60% of Leave voters think... Oh, thanks very much. Right, the majority of Remain voters felt that the risk of violence towards MPs was worth it if it meant we would stay in the EU. 58%... 53% in Scotland and 56% in Wales. See, it's less... See, Leave voters are... That's, that's ridiculously high. I mean, over 50% is bad. That's... Both sides... That's just... That's wild. I mean, the last time it felt so... People versus Parliament like this, right? It was way before any of our lifetimes. Um. We, for, for those of you watching outside of the United Kingdom, on the 5th of November we celebrate a, a night called Bonfire Night, where we build giant pyres of wood and drag an effigy of a gentleman called Guy Fawkes, mount him on the top of this pyre and set his ass alight. Now this is just an effigy, so it's made out of cardboard and shit, right? But we, this was all in, commem in, in remembrance of... <laughs> Guy Fox Knight, right? It's, it's Bonfire Night, Guy Fox Knight. Guy Fox tried to blow up Parliament. Seven, I don't know the date, the year, 176, blah, blah, blah. The film V for Vendetta kind of had the idea of what happened there, right? If you've seen V for Vendetta, that's what Guy Fox tried to do, right? Boom, right? So, see, so the last time. It was a people versus the parliament sketch. Now, I could be mistaken. If I am mistaken, correct me in the comments, but this shit happened. Well, and I say happens, it could happen. But anyway, let's continue on with this. The survey did not imply that the responder would conduct the violence themselves or specify that violence would be severe or even be carried out by those on the same political side as them. Richard Wynne-Jones, a professor of Welsh politics at Cardiff University, who co-directed the research, he said said he had been flabbergasted by the results, given the murder of the Labour MP Joe Cox. So, yes, 
before the 2016 referendum, yeah, Joe Cox was murdered. Um, this was brought up in a Commons. This was brought up in a Commons thing recently, and the backlash wasn't pleasant. I'll let you look that one up yourself. But anyway, and recent threats made towards other MPs. If we're going into a general election in which polarisation is the name of the game, it's very, very hard to see how you can bind these wounds," said Wynne Jones. Advertisements. Most people who responded to the survey also thought that violence towards MPs and violent protests in which people are badly injured were likely to occur if and when Brexit happens. Yes, I actually agree with that. I think this could seriously start off as a protests, then protests get a bit more rowdier, and then violence ensues, and then it becomes just a fucking full-scale riot. I'm not surprised if... It, well, not... I'll be surprised if it doesn't end up rioting, but I'll be pleasantly surprised if riots do not ensue and it all stays fairly civil. I'll be quite happy if it stays civil, because there's nothing wrong with protesting peacefully, but there's lots wrong with, with violent protests. Regardless of which side it's on, there's just no excuse for violence. Violence should be a last resort, and if this is coming to violence, it is probably because the British public feel that it's the last resort. And that's a scary thing, when the masses who are silent are no longer silent. But anyhow... I think this division is now... I think this existential, one Jones said, is about how we think we are and who we think we're not. It's very hard to see how the State of the Union in its current form survives Brexit. It won't. <coughs> Excuse me. It will not survive Brexit. Um, if there is an election, completely, um, Labour Party, Lib Dems, the Independents, are going to get crushed by Brexit Party, or Brexit Party and the Tory Party, the Conservatives. They're just going to get annihilated. In Scotland, I'm not so sure. But down in England and Wales, I'm pretty sure Labour's had its day and it's not going to go so well for them. So that alone is going to cause some severe changes in the political landscape of Britain. But anyway, um, let's just continue on. He added... If we're going into a general election in which further polari pol polarisation is the deliberate aim of the campaigning of at least some of the political parties, you do wonder in all seriousness where all of this ends. Oh, excuse me. I think I've got a cold coming on, to be quite honest. If of the 4,103 politically representative respondents, a significant number... 47% in Wales, 52% in England and 61% in Scotland thought that the UK's departure from the EU would likely lead to the breakup of the UK. The, many were also willing to see the Union change substantially if it meant they would get their own way on Brexit. Among Leave voters, 74% in England, the same percentage in Wales and 59% in Scotland believed that the breakup of the UK would be worth it to take back control through delivering Brexit. Here's the thing, right? You hear the the Scottish National Party representative of the House of Commons, um, Ian Blackford, battering on about the Scotland being independent from the the UK, right, and then wanting to get back into the EU and all that stuff. But it was a politics lie. I think he was on politics lie or something, like that, and he was called out on it. I'll find it. I'll put it in. And if I don't find it, I'll well, obviously I'll cut this bit out. Ha 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 ha. Right, but it's it's a horrible, horrible thing, right? Breaking up the because I'm pretty sure after the last referendum in Scotland to leave the e, the UK, the United Kingdom to become independent from the United Kingdom, Remain in the United Kingdom won, right? Now, I voted to leave the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. But I voted to leave the EU as well. Right? But, hey ho. But, yeah, well, anyway, that doesn't matter now, does it, by the looks of it? Because all our votes don't fucking mean shit anyway. 
Similar proportions of Remainers believed undermining faith in the Union would be a price worth paying in order to remain in the EU. See, that's horrible though, because the EU is just terrible. I mean, look at one of the videos I put up, right? In the video of Ian Blackford being told how what he's making Boris do to the, for the EU to Boris, what if the UK did that to him, right? And I'm actually just going to find it and put it up, right? So let's go looking. Well, I just want to ask a question. Can we take it then that if, if ever Scotland voted to leave the United Kingdom, uh, the SNP would never agree to leave the United Kingdom until the British government had chosen to give the Scotland a deal. So without a deal, Scotland would remain in the e in the United Kingdom indefinitely. Is that right? That's that's that's, that's frankly ridiculous. Well, it's and the you know same, it's isn't it? Because you, no, you, if you left the United were, Kingdom, no, you're being you're being you're, you're being no, obtuse. Because what the we question. will do is we will we will have a white paper. We'll have a plan, and we'll be prepared to go into negotiations. So you leave without a deal, and of course we'll be staying in the. European Union. No, that's not oh, what well, we're talking we about because <laughs> no, no. Right. Hopefully that's up there. Yep, got it. Right, cool. Right, anyway, moving on. Alyssa Henderson, a professor of political science at the University of Edinburgh and fellow co director of the research, said the findings showed that Brexit negotiations were putting the Union under considerable strain, regardless of whether we stay or go. She added both sides are prepared to fundamentally rewrite the rules of politics as we know it to get what they want. Well fucking said, because um, the Ben Act, the Lebanon, the Lebanon, oh, that that they are all unconstitutional, and I'm pretty sure the Ben Act was violating like espionage laws and shit. But anyway, staying in the EU will likely decrease faith in the Union. Brexit could well change its borders. It really could. Despite Leave voters' conviction that Brexit should be delivered at all costs, over half the people throughout all three countries thought that the nation would become substantially poorer as a result of Brexit. I don't think it will, but that's just me, personally. However, a huge number of those who voted Leave in the EU referendum believed that economic losses would be worth it. 76% in England and Scotland and 81% in Wales. See, I, even if we do, I agree. That I would agree the economic loss is probably worth it to be away from the European Union. Anyway, similarly, voters voters overwhelmingly felt that the potential destruction of the country's farming and fishing industries would be a price worth paying for getting the result they wanted in the Brexit negotiations. See, I don't agree with that because I think if we get out of there, we get our fishing waters back and tell the the French and everybody else to get fucking back to their own fucking waters and leave our fish to us. Right. Oof. And that will be that. The Guardians fucking get fucked. Right, so anyway, as you can, this is a bit of a mad situation all round um, at the moment. Boris Johnson has fulfilled every problem, everything that he has been made to do. He's been made to get a deal. He's been made to ask for an extension. He's been made to do everything, and they still won't give him any leeway. It is fucking ridiculous. Now, the deal is fucking terrible. And I mean, the deal is absolutely fucking terrible. But, it's not the point. The deal, even though the deal is terrible, it's still a deal that they asked for. And now they're just trying their best to frustrate things even more. I mean, it's never been so obvious. So, going back to my initial point, we don't want this to happen to any, any time soon, right? So, let me know what you think in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you think, if you agree with this poll, if you disagree with that, if you think it's not as polarising as you think. But anyway, just let me know. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, new subscribers, thank you very much for subscribing to me. I'll try to put out some more content. I'm just... Oh, for, you know, this coming up for this time of year, it's, you get kids, you get Halloween, you get Christmas. It's just horrible, right? So anyway, I'll hopefully catch you all in the next one, all right?